On the profile interview segment this week, I'll be speaking with the General Secretary of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Emmanuel Uwoja. He brings us up to speed on what the journey was like for the Nigerian Labour Congress to have the 19th edition of training and retraining of their members. He also spoke about several issues that affect workers, especially the removal of fuel subsidy and the proposed strike by the Nigerian Labour Congress. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you for having me. A lot has been happening in the world of work, and most recently, um, the Nigerian Labour Congress, for the 19th time, um, trained uh, workers on the need to organize and not agonize. Can you tell us why it's important for Nigerian workers to be updated in uh, what the world best practice is in the world of work? Uh, most of the time, we spend our awake time more at work mm. uh, so you then need to be properly equipped mentally physically intellectually uh, to be able to make the best of that time and uh, in an increasingly globalized world where people know what is happening across board uh, across uh, the continents you then have to be at your best, mm. knowing that uh, whatever attitude, whatever capacity you bring to work uh, at the press of a button is being viewed by people across the globe. So uh, we therefore feel that we must be at the top of our abilities uh, to continue to deliver uh, to the world of work in our country. And what has been the feedback so far from um, workers, especially probably the challenges they are faced with in the workplace? We're very sure of um, some organizations that do not want workers to belong to the union. Uh, we also have a couple of companies springing up, especially in the tr free trade zones across the country. What would be your message towards um, allowing workers to be part of the union? What are the advantages um, for an average employer and also for workers to actually belong? It's uh, an employer that belongs to the Stone Age that will be struggling to try to stop the existence of a union. Uh, the union has come to stay. The union has come to be part of the world of work because uh, humans must uh, organize. It's uh, the basic thing uh, from nuclear family to extended family to communities to areas of interest, people must associate. So clearly anybody still uh, uh, behind time imagining you can stop the existence of, uh, of a union uh, needs to be pitied uh, because uh, the person will be dissipating energy completely in the wrong direction. and the, present world order uh, does not uh, leave room for slacking. It doesn't leave room for uh, unnecessary indulgence in uh, unproductive uh, efforts, uh, rather than uh, channel your energy towards stopping something mm. that's inevitable. It's uh, best you put your energy in maximizing the advantages of uh, having an organized workforce. Uh, rather than uh, trying to stop the organizing of, uh, of uh, the workers into a trade union now. So clearly, the best thing to do is to embrace the union. Looking at the theme of this course this year during the 19th training, and I hope probably there will be a grand celebration for the 20th, <laughs> or is it 25, the NLC will want to celebrate. The theme actually focused on building and resilience for the emerging challenges and opportunities in the world of work. Do you want to expand shades on what uh, the learnings were as regards the theme of this course? Yeah, uh, clearly, you know, coming out of uh, the pandemic uh, and the challenge through at everybody mm. across the globe, uh, it had become increasingly uh, necessary to appreciate the uh, abilities that helped the world uh, push through that process and the uh, understandings, the uh, resilience that uh, saw people through 
those dark times and they coming together the mm -hmm. shared values the shared humanity that helped to bring that to fore so so for us is uh, and some of the innovations that uh, were brought forth uh, across the globe uh, uh, in nigeria you saw the dexterity with which uh, our people provided uh, homegrown uh, face masks so to say and uh, the abilities in terms of uh, constructing and uh, uh, reinventing or adjusting uh, life support systems, the oxygen uh, machines and all. And uh, uh, you then realize uh, that the world of work uh, also brought some new threats uh, the uh, work from home syndrome, the virtual mm -hmm. work abilities and uh, all that, the dual work system uh, that has helped keep jobs, mm -hmm. that had helped keep systems working. Uh, so we needed to get a grip and all that and uh, encourage ourselves uh, to know that uh, what has to be constant in life is change and that innovations that help make uh, work and uh, life a bit more uh, convenient and comfortable will continue to evolve. Talking about change, talking about innovation, we know that um, the internet and the um, web is what um, Nigerians are into now because that's what uh, is global best practice in terms of accessibility to information in terms of probably how the um, typical workplace actually have to be with the current realities many people even actually have to work from home at times um, we also have AI which many people are trying to still adapt to uh, what will be your message to an average worker in terms of upskilling uh, when it comes to adapting to the new changes and realities in the world of work, especially as re it regards to technology? Uh, we've always uh, preached to our members the need to keep acquiring more knowledge, uh, train, retrain, keep training, keep retraining, keep uh, uh, keeping yourself abreast of uh, innovations abreast of uh, new technology, new systems, new direction. Uh, and clearly, uh, uh, AI has uh, brought a new dimension to the world of work, mm. uh, where humans are now sharing uh, work with uh, uh, all manner of uh, equipments mm -hmm. and uh, facilities and uh, balancing the act mm -hmm. so clearly for us uh, we are aware uh, some jobs are going uh, while some jobs are going oh, some coming. fresh ones uh, new ones never heard of ones are coming up uh, well, but you can get it more dramatic than in the era of office management, uh, from the Olympia typewriter to the bulk desktop to uh, your regular desktop to laptops to now tiny uh, uh, pumps that are all being put to use. Uh, so clearly, uh, you're having uh, that all over in the uh, hospitality industry in the communication industry, even in uh, the transportation industry. Mm. Haulage, logistics is all uh, taking a different shape, a new dimension. Mm. So uh, we keep encouraging uh, workers to be flexible in terms of uh, uh, ability to acquire knowledge and uh, so nobody gets fixated uh, with one line of uh, mm. skill and ability, but uh, put your brain to work, uh, make yourself available to uh, apply some basic knowledge and ability you have in the direction of a, a new uh, mode of uh, uh, work or process.
very quickly during the training which i was actually part of um unemployment rates insecurity kidnapping corruption seems to be some of the challenges that an average nigerian worker is faced with uh what more needs to be done by relevant stakeholders to ensure that um, this is probably reduced to barest minimum what role can the workers play towards um a better country uh, uh, if not for the worker if not for the workers resilience and uh, commitment i doubt if we'll have a country today because uh is the worker that has uh, gone through the pressure of insecurity to still deliver health services at mm -hmm. uh, far-flung uh, community health health facilities mm -hmm. is the worker that has uh, gone out of the call of duty to deliver education to idp camps and far-flung villages that have been cut off uh, from regular uh, systems is the worker that has uh, had to uh, stay long periods of uh, non-payment of salaries and emoluments but has still kept the uh, will of uh, governance uh, going. So for us, it's, uh, if only the elite can subject to themselves to the kind of rigorous training we have had to drive, uh, like you noted, uh, 19th edition is not the 19th year. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been running uh, the COVID uh, uh cut short uh, uh two years out of uh, that for us uh if not would have been talking about uh, 22 years of uh, commitment to this process for the worker we are constant we are available we are committed to the community we are committed to humanity we are committed we are committed to global development Finally, I want us to have that conversation as regards um, the alleged job racketeering um, at the federal government level. Um, looking at the rate of unemployment in the country, what would be your message to relevant stakeholders on how job handlings should be? If there are opportunities or when there are opportunities, what should be the process? What would be your recommendation so that it would be a fair level playing ground for everyone to have access? It's, uh, you know, there's this native adage that says a goat that is owned by uh, a single goat that is owned by plenty of people mm. dies of hunger because uh, in the villages uh, you were supposed to help uh, to tie a goat and then provide grass to eat. So if it's an individual, he knows that his goat needs to eat, so he keeps bringing. But if he is owned by several people, is taking that this one will assume this will bring food to the goat, this will bring food to the end, the goat ends up starving. Uh, the scenario we have is a situation where in private sector, you don't have uh, employment racketeering because the person knows who he's looking for and he doesn't care the religion of who he's looking for. A, a, a factory needs a forklift driver. They are not going to put up a notice to say we're looking for a Christian or a Muslim forklift driver. They're going to tell you we need a forklift driver. Mm -hmm. And when you come in from uh, Ismail to Solomon, you'll be put to drive the forklift. And if you're able to operate it, the dexterity on it gets you the job. Mm -hmm. uh, but once it comes to public service, uh, people first begin to look at the name that has been forwarded. Is the name Usman or is the name uh, Matthew? And then uh, the shenanigans uh, take off from there. So at the end of the day, uh, they have resorted to hiding the fact that there's a vacancy. Uh, so when you hide the fact that there's a vacancy and you want to fill it through uh, an opaque process, then it generates all manner of uh, absurdities. And that is when the criminal uh, tendency uh, kicks in. You, the corrupt attitude of wanting to uh, personalize the employment mm -hmm. uh, comes in. And then uh, the other criminal element of uh, others on the side feeling they can make money out of the same process mm -hmm. kicks in. And so we, people ordinarily know what to do. The rules have always been there. 
why the rules are never applied is what shocks most of us uh, because you come uh, it's easy for our leaders to always know about somebody else's job but they never know theirs it's an open secret that will have BVNs. Mm -hmm. And it's an open secret that they say salaries of public workers are paid to banks. But you still have people gleefully tell you, uh, we've discovered 2,500 ghost workers. What is ghost about someone that has a BVN? Because if uh, the BVN is uh, identification for known human beings, and you have paid money to 2,500 known human beings, what makes them ghost? Because they, when they ban these such figures and uh, make heavy weight of it politically, nobody, not a single person, gets prosecuted. Mm. Not a single person accounts. Not a single person returns money. But they will tell you who have uncovered 15,000 ghost workers in a system that monies are supposed to be paid, wages are supposed to be paid through the banks. Mm. And the banks have told us that no account or press except you have a BVN. So, you, you know, it's, it's here that uh, people, leaders make pronouncements that can only come from beer parlors because they don't think them true. If they think them true, they will make such pronouncements uh, to people. So it's easy to stem the tide of uh, employment racketeering if the leadership so desires. But because uh, it helps them cover their own uh, inner weaknesses of nepotism, then they are, they are unable to drive that process because an open employment process puts paid to whatever uh, racketeering that would have gone on in terms of uh, buying of uh, employment slots. But because they will still prefer to have employment slots hidden mm. and filled by them at their homes and campuses, they will continue to have the ones that are uh, commercial inclined making money out of such evil transactions also. So the simple thing is to get back to the process, the legitimate process of recruitment, which is transparent and open. You advertise if there are vacancies, everybody applies, and then the best get taken. It's the right way to go. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. And that's all we can take on today's edition of the program. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember that labor creates wealth.